Now that we've taken a look at finding partial derivatives, we're ready to take a look at finding these higher partial derivatives. And first, let's take a look at some notation. Because when we take a higher partial derivative, we can do the partial derivative with respect to x. And then we can do the partial derivative with respect to x again. Or we could do y the second time. Similarly, we could go y then x or y then y. So let's take a look at notationally what happens when the first derivative we take is with respect to x or y. And then we'll take a look at what happens when the second derivative that we take is with respect to x or y. So notationally, if the first derivative is with respect to x, we can do a subscript of x followed by another subscript of x. And that means we're doing the derivative with respect to x twice. With the delta notation, it would be the partial derivative with respect to x. And then we square them to show we're doing it twice. So those are the two notations that we can use for the partial derivative with respect to x, then x. If we want to do the partial derivative with respect to x, then y, the notation on the subscripts is we're going to do the first derivative on the outside and the second derivative on the inside. So it kind of looks backwards. f sub yx means we take the first derivative with respect to x, the second one with respect to y. When we're doing the delta notation, we actually put them in the order we go. So it's going to be the second derivative with respect to x and then with respect to y. They're in opposite orders, but they mean the same thing. As you might expect, the derivative with respect to y first then, followed by x, would be fxy. Or in delta notation, the second derivative with respect to y, then this with respect to x. And as you might expect from the xx derivative, the yy derivative would be fyy, or the second derivative with respect to y squared. That's the notation that tells us which derivative to take first and second. So let's find all four second partial derivatives of the function f of xy is equal to the natural log of 3x to the fourth minus y squared. First, I'm going to find the partial derivative with respect to x and y, because we need that first derivative. So the first derivative with respect to x, natural log is 1 over the stuff, 3x to the fourth minus y squared. Then we take the derivative of the stuff. With respect to x, that's going to be 12x cubed, because the y we treat as a constant. If we want the first derivative with respect to y, we're going to take the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over the stuff, 3x to the fourth minus y squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the stuff with respect to y. So the x is a constant and goes to 0. We just get negative 2y. Now that we've got those first derivatives, let's take a look at our second derivatives. Let's take the partial of x with respect to x twice. If that's the case, we'll use the quotient rule here. The derivative of the top is 36x squared times the bottom, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared, minus the derivative of the bottom with respect to x is 12x cubed times the top, which is another 12x cubed all over the bottom, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared squared. We could simplify that a bit, but let's keep going and find another partial derivative. This time, we're going to do the partial derivative of x and then y. We'll take the derivative of the numerator, which is 0, times the denominator, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared, minus taking the derivative of the denominator is negative 2y times the numerator, which is 12x cubed, all over the denominator 3x to the fourth minus y squared squared. One nice thing about this is anything times 0 is 0, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase all that extra stuff. Also, I've got a double negative, which is going to make it a positive. 
Just a little clean up there. Let's go to our second, the f sub y partial derivative then. So the partial derivative with respect to y and then x, using our quotient rule, the derivative of the numerator is 0 with respect to x times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator with respect to x is 12x cubed, the rest of it going to 0, times the numerator, which is negative 2y all over the denominator, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared, and all of that squared. Again, it's nice. 0 times anything is 0, so I can erase all of that. We have a negative times a negative, which makes those both positive. So I'm going to erase that. And what you might notice, this is really interesting is our derivative with respect to x, then y, is the same as the derivative with respect to y, then x. That actually will always happen. Those are the same. It turns out that, as a rule, f of xy is equal to f of y x. So sometimes you can choose which derivative you want to take first. The order doesn't technically matter. Those are exactly the same. We still have one partial left to take, though. We haven't done the f sub y, y. And since I'm running out of space, I'm just going to move over here to the right and do f y, y is equal to derivative with respect to y of the numerator is negative 2 times the denominator, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared minus the derivative of the denominator, which is negative 2y times the numerator, which is negative 2y all over the denominator squared, which is 3x to the fourth minus y squared squared. So the key here is we're taking our partial derivatives is you treat the other variable like it's a constant. It's your turn to practice some of these, both first and second partial derivatives.